guys. So I obviously didn't figure out how to pause it. <laughs> Sorry. But I figured uh, since the video stopped anyway, I would get the generic coloring done um, and talk about just a couple of tips and tricks while you're coloring of how you could do some more shading because you are um, <clears throat> doing a 3D figure. Okay. So real quick, I just want to show you and then you guys can go off and you can color, you could do your thing and then hopefully I'll be able to get a picture of your art or something and, and see all of your cool Lego figures. Okay, so if you want to do shading, um, there's a couple parts that I focus on the most with shading. Okay, so say um, in the face, in these ones, there's different kinds of shading. That one I did with pencil first. This one I did all with crayons, just an orange and a yellow crayon. So, to give it more of a cylinder rounded shape, I'll show you with this orange crayon what I did. Okay, so in the face, along the bottom, and mostly one side or the other, I chose my right side. And a little bit, you know, like under the hair, because there would be a tiny bit of a shadow under the hair. But coming down the side of the face here, I did a curve so that I followed that, like, curved shape of the face. Much thicker over on the right side. All right, underneath the neck, I did a line that came down, like there's light coming from over here, but this part of the neck is casting a shadow. And then along the top here, I didn't press down too hard, just ever so lightly. I went in and added in um, to make this part a little bit darker, right? Or like with my black and white shirt, maybe right across the shoulders with gray. I'm just going to make that part where the white is a little bit darker so it's gray. Or like right in here, I press down harder with my gray and really lightly right here with my gray so that it looked like this had more of a shadow. You can do the same thing, and with Legos, usually they have like that yellow skin. You can do whatever skin tone you would like, obviously. So, um, I will show you shading in the arms. Right, usually when we have a shadow, it's more on, on like the inside of our arm. So going down the inside of the arm. You could do a little bit of orange. Um, also, if you decided to put like any kind of design in your shirt, um, I ended up doing sleeves because I wanted to show you that what's on the um, arms, again, is curved because they're rounded instead of straight um, on like a straight surface. Or I curve these to give the illusion like this part of my body is rounded. Okay, so inside of the arms, or like same thing if you wanted to do a little bit more of a shadow with a different color for your clothes, like gray, there's white in your clothes. Or you can just press down harder to make it darker and lighter to make it lighter. And then I also, right in that like bottom part of my wrist, or my arms that connect to the wrist, I made that darker. Or if you have the inside of your hands that you drew that's showing, I made that, that part a little bit darker. All right, and then the rest I did either like, you could do like yellow, yellow, you could do a golden yellow. Um, I'm going to do a gold and a yellow for mine. Okay. 
when I was coloring it, I was like, oh, these clothes kind of remind me of, like, clothes that I used to wear right around when I was your guys' age. And so I was like, so for fun, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna stick with that theme. And I used to have purple hair. After years of abuse, I had to stop dyeing my hair, <laughs> lest it all fall out. Um, so I thought of the colors and things that I used to wear and when I was 13, but then I realized I still have my pregnant belly. I was not pregnant at 13, guys. I just put that one out there. Okay. So I do, if you do glasses, I like to do the skin behind the glasses too. Right, so that just gives it a little bit more of that shadow look. When you go in with your lighter color, I don't just do it in empty spaces. I do it on top of the darker color as well. Or you can shade it by very lightly coloring in with pencil first and then coloring on top like I did with the first one over there. Right. <clears throat> now, another thing I wanted to show you was um, adding in shading into that part of the legs that's supposed to bend. And then I'll show you how to do shadows and differentiate your ground from your background if you use the same colors right after I finish coloring this arm. Okay. I like to try and color in my whole, whole thing. Okay. And I decided that I was at like a concert or shopping or something cool. And so I was like, yeah. Okay. So I did gray for my pants would have been wearing those skinny jeans so right along here where that curves what I did was I pressed down soft for my color right just press down lightly and then right along that curve I pressed down a little bit harder on the top side to make it look like there is a bend. Not super important, you don't have to. You can also do a little bit harder at the top and softer going down if it looks kind of weird. Right? Tiny little little detail, not really necessary. And then I did my ground and my background black. And I pressed down really lightly just to get the base color in. So I'll show you if I can, there it is. I'll show you how you can add in a shadow. All right, so like in this one, I have a little bit of a shadow under my figure. I have a little bit of a shadow underneath my, my pot with my plant in it. All right, so to do that, you just take the same color you were using and just press down a little bit harder. And I like to do it right underneath my figure. If you want to, you can do it going off to the side, right? Because so far, um, for the most part, the light that's hitting my face and my neck is coming mostly from this direction. Um, that takes a little bit more brain power. It's not like super important to get the angle. Right, but I go in, add it in a little bit darker. If you use the same color for the ground and the background, then you know you'd have that like base for your ground, and then right where the wall would meet your ground of the same color. I'll do it right here. <clears throat> I press down harder. 
And then as I go up, I just slowly, slowly, slowly press down lighter and lighter for it to fade. And that kind of helps the wall pop out away from this so that it looks more realistic, like there's depth instead of just all the same thing with a line through it, right? Or like back behind my figure, stuff is going to be a little bit darker because it's behind me. So like the arms between my figure right here. I'm going to do that dark part along the ground over here. I've got a piece of tape holding this on, so my crayon does not want to color right there. Or if you have something you're holding that's similar to your background color like this is, you know, you can kind of do the same kind of thing with that. Just to get it to pop out a little bit better. Okay? So there is my art. I want you guys to have lots of fun with your Lego figures. It doesn't have to be what you look like right now. It could be what you looked like years ago or what you want to look like in the future. Um, try and have something that really defines you if you can. I'd love to see them. Um, so send me pictures. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.